WZDX presents an extra look at the hottest action from the world of sports. This is WZDX Sports Extra with Mo Carter, Charity Chambers, and Kayla Carlisle. And welcome back to another edition of WZDX Sports Extra, or like we call it around here, the X. <laughs> All right, Mo Carter here alongside Kayla Carlisle and Charity Chambers. Yeah, this week's severe weather and heavy rain tried to put a damper on a lot of sporting events across the Tennessee Valley. But of course, as always, we found a way to bring everyone the best sports coverage in Absolutely. our area. Absolutely. <laughs> as always. So let's go ahead and show you guys what we have in store for tonight. Coming up, we've got Alabama basketball star Colin Sexton heading to Cleveland. Also, Kayla went out to Gunnersville Lake this weekend for Hydrofest. She'll be giving her best take on the event. And finally, we'll have our Sunday sit-down guest, Alabama a and women's basketball coach Margaret Richards. She joins us and also, of course, our best of the week. Can't wait for all that to happen, but we will kick things off tonight with the NBA draft. It's been a while since the University of Alabama men's basketball team has had any traffic on draft night, but that all changed on Thursday with one of the Tide's top players. Eighth pick in the 2018 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Colin Sexton from the University of Alabama. And with that announcement, Alabama's Colin Sexton ended a long draft day streak for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Sexton became the first Tide player selected on draft day since Richard Hendricks in 2008. His selection in the top eight makes him the first lottery pick chosen from Alabama since Antonio McDice in 1995. Sexton and his head coach Avery Johnson were extremely happy following the draft. Very excited. I'm glad the Cavs picked me at number eight. Um, when I was working out for them, I felt like that was one of my better workouts. I'm very excited uh, to be a part of the organization. So happy for Colin and his family, his mom and dad, brother and sister, um, and also all of the coaches at Alabama and staff members that have impacted his life in, in so many different ways. On Friday, Sexton was introduced to the Cavaliers family. He'll keep his same jersey number that he wore at the Capstone. Sexton's selection by the Cavs was a dream come true for the young bull, but it also was a perfect opportunity for the Cavs to get the top guy that they wanted on the draft board. Look at him two years ago, um, wasn't on the circuit as being one of the top players in the country, um, but he continued to work and um, continued to dedicate himself to the game of basketball, and look where he's at today. Now, there's still no word if Colin Sexton will be a teammate of Cavs superstar LeBron James just yet, but Sexton does know that regardless of the situation, he has to come out and make an impact in multiple ways. Um, I'm going to set goals for myself, and then as well as it's going to be team goals that we set, um, but I feel like I'm not going to have to live up to anybody's shoes. I'm just come in and learn and, and be the best player I can be on the court as well as off the court. So, ladies, what kind of impact do you think Colin Sexton will have as he gets ready to play for the Cleveland Cavaliers? I like kind of how you mentioned in your package, regardless of whether or not LeBron James is on the Cavs, again, I believe the odds are he's not going to be back. But regardless <laughs> of that, I think Colin Sexton, he is going to still be a key player, if not the main player for the Cavs. I mean, we know his nickname is the Young Bull, and that's really kind of has to do with his aggressiveness driving yeah. to the paint. That's one of his strong points, and much of his damage is done out of the pick and roll. He's, his 5.5 points per game is ranked second in the SEC in those scenarios this year. So that's kind of amazing. And I think he'll fit in well with Cleveland because they did a lot of 1-3-1-5 pick and rolls this year with either James or Love as a screener, with with Hill as a point girl. And, and while Hill is a pretty good outside shooter, I think Sexton will give Cleveland someone who can split the defenders and look for contact in the paint or even kick out to an open shooter. He needs to work on his spot-up shooting, though. And, of course, also one of the other things, he's 19 years old. I mean, as any 19-year-old going into professional sports he's going to be raw he's going to need to perfect his craft but I mean to be honest all in all Cleveland is it's going to be a great fit for him I think it's a good fit for him I, I agree with everything you just said though you know he's a great leader that's what all those NBA teams are looking for they're looking for a fresh young kid who's ready to play he's ready to be there work every day however I think if LeBron were to stay I don't think it'd be a very good matchup 
but that's only, you know, LeBron needs a certain kind of person and who needs, who has experience. I don't think Sexton's ready for that yet. Yeah. All right. So if LeBron stays, here's a potential starting five for the Cavaliers. Let's take a look at this. Colin Sexton could be starting at the point guard position, followed by Jeff Green at the shooting guard, LeBron James at the small forward, Larry Nance at the power forward, and Tristan Thompson at the center. We'll have a little bit more on this. What's going on with LeBron James coming up in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, and switching gears now, Auburn also received some big news this week with their baseball program. You may remember the Tigers came up one game short of reaching the College World Series, but the Tigers should have more opportunities in the future to get there, especially since their coach is sticking around for a while. Earlier this week, Butch Thompson agreed to a contract extension that will keep him on the planes through the 2024 season. The Tigers have won 37 and 42 games in their previous two seasons under him, and this year they advanced to their first Super Regionals in 19 years. New Auburn Athletic Director Alan Green knows how good of a move this is. So Coach and I have talked about you know him being around here for a long time, and um, we want him here for a long time. And so there's not much you can, more you can ask for out of a coach. Um, you know he gets he gets all he can out of them. The players know that he loves them dearly and he cares about them as people, and that's the type of leader we want for our program. Auburn fans, I'm sure, hoping Coach Thompson can lead the team to Omaha one day soon. And speaking of, the College World Series final begins tomorrow. Oregon State taking on Arkansas, my old stomping grounds. I worked there for about a year before joining you guys, though. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here now in the Rocket <laughs> City. Let's Love switch it. things over now to boat racing. It was the first time in 49 years that the hydroplane boats were brought back to the state of Alabama this weekend. The weather threw off any chances of having an actual race, but while they were here, Kayla Carlisle got a chance to catch up with some of the drivers. Yeah, that's right. She even got a special look into how their boats operate. Kayla, it seems like you got to experience a lot of the behind the scenes action. Oh, I sure did. Guys, while I was there, I spoke to several drivers, but only one of them gave me an inside look into how to drive one of these hydroplanes. Now this one in particular is 30 feet long. 18 feet wide and it weighed more than 7,000 pounds and for those of you unfamiliar with this sport I came up with a quick guide to show you just some of the ins and outs you you just get in a boat one day and you decide hey I want to drive this one go faster kind of well no yeah yes and no um, I think every person has a, a little bit of a different uh, answer to that question that's Brian Perkins he's an h1 unlimited hydroplane racer out of Seattle Washington and just so happens to be our guide to all things hydroplane boats he began his journey on the water 18 years ago on a 15 foot one liter class boat. Today, he's racing a 30 foot unlimited Payne West Insurance speed machine. 3,000 horsepower and go 200 miles an hour. Here's your step by step guide into becoming a top notch boat racer. Step one get into the hydroplane. All right, I'm gonna swing my legs. And I just slide down. Step two attach the steering wheel. Get you all set. Oh, wow, okay. This on it makes it difficult to get in and out. Oh, I, I can see that. Yeah. Step three: practice your breathing in very tight spaces. You tighten basically to the point where you almost can't breathe. Like, mm. like if you're like that, it's tough. Okay. So uh, no breathing while you drive. Yeah. <laughs> Step four: know what all of those buttons and pedals do. So all three of these pedals. Yeah. You press. Yep. Yep. It's throttle. The throttle pedal is the one on your right. Yeah. And we leave that planted the whole time. Those pedals move that great big huge front wing out there that say Daryl Strong mm -hmm. on it. And go ahead, I want you to push either one, it doesn't matter. You gotta push hard, 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 like a leg press. There you go. Oh my god. Go. And step five, go fast. Guys, I'm currently inside of a hydroplane boat. This is crazy. Now, some of the stuff you didn't see was the scuba gear that lies right behind the driver's seat in case of any accidents. And you also missed how insanely hot it was inside of that boat. Being in tight spaces in Alabama during the summer just doesn't mix all that well. But let's go ahead and send it over to Mo Carter, who has a very special guest with him tonight. Thanks, Kayla. Coming up next, we've got the Sunday sit down with our very special guest, Coach Margaret Richards of the Alabama A&M women's basketball team. She'll talk about last season, next season and the offseason. And we might even talk to her about a personal accolade. Stay tuned for that coming up next. Welcome back. It's now time for the Sunday sit down and joining us in studio is the head lady bulldog. It's coach Margaret Richards. Coach, I feel like I haven't seen you since the end of the basketball season, but from what you've been telling me, you've been a very busy lady this summer. Very busy. 
Uh, we have 90% of our team in summer school right now. So we are doing uh, summer workouts there in school, getting ahead academically. And we also had an opportunity to have some summer uh, camps as well. Awesome, awesome. Let's reflect back upon the 2017-18 season. Compared to your first year, a nine-win improvement, which is definitely on the up and up for a program that you have taken under your wing. Um, how did you feel as far as, you know, seeing those improvements happen from the player standpoint and then from a coach's standpoint? Uh, well, from the player standpoint, I'm, I was glad we was able to make some improvements because we really worked extremely hard the previous summer before. And I know sometimes when you don't get the results that you want right. and I want to see them you know more wins in the columns this year um, but from the coach's standpoint we definitely was very disappointed that we did not get into the tournament and that is one thing that we are on our young ladies about because you know I think our youth you know kind of hurt us with you know the lack of experience um, but I don't like to make excuses you know we are working extremely hard this summer to make sure that change for this upcoming season now one big change you did have from one to two was the depth that you had. I mean, talk about how important that was, having that extra few girls on the bench this year to help out. Uh, that was extremely important. Again, you know, um, with the guard spot, just having the depth that we need because the SWAC is guard oriented. So mm -hmm. I really uh, was happy about that, that we was able to rotate our guards in and out. We really didn't have to play anybody like five, four people, long 30 minutes, you know, per game. So, you know, I feel like our young ladies was fresh most of the time. Can you kind of just tell the Bulldog Nation what they can expect from these um, young additions with your signing class? Uh, well, actually, it was three. It's three? Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Even better. Uh, yes, Even it better. was three. Uh, well, I would like to talk about, you know, the guard first. Uh, she's the oldest. Uh, she come from Mobley Community College. Her name is Cornethia Brown. We are very excited about how she will be able to add some experience. She's a very smart basketball player, brings a high basketball IQ, you know, pretty solid. Right. Be able to keep our youth in line a little bit. That's what we really depending on her. Um, our forward position, we have Lucy uh, Chanello. She is from Nigeria. Okay. So we're very, very excited about how, you know, just a tremendous athlete. Uh, she can run run all day. I mean, she can jump. She's a relentless rebounder. She's uh, physical, um, got a great body, you know, about 5'11", 6 foot. She's, uh, you know, extremely aggressive, you know. We have another power four where we have um, Lazare Saunders. She is from Michigan, okay. uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And she is we're very excited about her. She's versatile. She can play, you know, the three and the four. She's about six foot. She recently played in the uh, Michigan All-Star Game and received MVP. And we're very excited, you know, to bring her aboard as well. Yeah. Now, Coach, <laughs> a couple months ago, um, you received a very great individual honor, being inducted into the Kentucky High School <laughs> Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Now, we did some research as well. And if they can pop it up, <laughs> Do you recognize this person? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was me about a long time ago. Um, mid to late 90s. Yes, 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 mid to late 90s. Um, that was, that, was, that award is just still touching. It's just still unbelievable. Uh, when they, when I first got the phone call in um, November, it just like, you know, just brought tears to my eyes. I mean, just all the hard work, I guess you just never know who's paying attention. And that's why I just always try to tell the young ladies, like, just reach for the stars and just continue to work hard because you just never know. But, you know, going to Louisville Central High School and just being a Yellow Jacket, that was some of the best four years of my life. And, you know, I always hated losing. And, you know, we did some great things there. And I was able to win they first, you know, win the first sixth region, you know, my sophomore season. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so that that just that was just unbelievable, and I'm very honored to you know get, receive that award. Coach Margaret Rich is joining us in the house tonight on the Sunday sit down. We've got more WZDX Sports Extra coming your way after the break. And now back to the action on WZDX Sports Extra. Well, in case your thermometer wasn't a clue, summer has officially started as of last Thursday at 5:07 a.m. That means it's time for a summer getaway, right? Well, there's no reason not to keep in shape when you're enjoying some summer fun just up the road in Tennessee. You can find lots of fun activities and melt those summer pounds off in no time. Just because it's summertime doesn't mean you have to go soft in the middle from laying around in a hammock all day. For summer fun that can keep you fit, let's hop on the road and head north to the Ocoee River. 
While some folks might think of the movie Deliverance when they think of river expeditions, trust me, the Akoi is the furthest thing from dueling banjos you can imagine. About three hours from the Tennessee Valley, you'll find the Akoi River Basin with dozens of places willing to put you in a rubber boat and do their best to drown you. Whitewater rafting can be an amazing workout. At the site of the canoe slalom venue for the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics, the Ocoee River has slower rapids for newbies all the way up to the Class 5 scare the life jacket off you whitewater. <coughs> Plan ahead and make reservations for a fun wet weekend. Oh, and definitely bring a towel. Don't know how to swim? No problem. How about something a little more uplifting? Further north around the Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge area are several zip line locations. Put on a helmet, strap in, and go flying over the treetops of the Smoky Mountains. If you're afraid of heights, some locations also offer mountain biking. Zooming through the forest at top speed will definitely get your adrenaline going. And who knows, you might even see some local wildlife. <laughs> If you want a super intense workout, one of the most unique things to do if you're visiting the Smoky Mountains is to hike the Mount LeConte Lodge. Hike over five miles to the highest guest lodge in the eastern U.S. with an elevation of over 6,400 feet. No driving for this adventure, you can only get there on one of the five hiking trails. The lodge is off the grid with heat from stoves and light from gas lamps, but hey, what a view. With no roads, the lodge has a unique way to get their groceries delivered. On the way down, you might encounter the special train that supplies the lodge. And it's not that kind of train, it's a llama train. That's right, I said llamas. Say what? These sure-footed animals don't tear up the trails like horses do, but watch out, they do spit. <laughs> Finally, if this is more of a workout than you want on vacation, and you want something, shall we say, a little more touristy, Dollywood Amusement Park in Pigeon Forge is home to some of the best roller coasters in the southeast. Plus, you can still get your workout in just by walking around the park's 150 acres. Most people can average about 2,000 steps an hour. Of course, that may not matter at all if you stop for some of their famous cinnamon bread. Holy cow, this stuff is amazing. But whatever you do, don't eat that cinnamon bread and then try this. <laughs> And for links to any of the mentioned adventures, make sure to head over to our website after the show at rocketcitynow.com. I'm not really much of an outdoorsy person, but that does look kind of fun. It does look fun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I will get outdoor for some football, though, and though the season isn't here yet, that didn't stop some big-name Alabama and Auburn players from hitting the gridiron this week at the annual Manning Passing Academy on the campus of Nickel State University in South Louisiana. For the 23rd straight year, SEC grades Archie, Payton, Eli, and Brother Cooper are taking part in developing the minds of high school quarterbacks and wideouts on the gridiron. Several college QBs are lending a helping hand in the process, including Alabama's Jalen Hurts, Washington's Jake Browning, and Auburn's Jared Stidham. All right, let's go off the gun now. The, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get around to be around Archie Payton and Eli and Cooper and you know all the rest of the coaches, the rest of these players. Uh, there's so much to be learned from everybody. Um, so I, I'm just really trying to take it all in. Not necessarily you know working so much physically, it's more mentally and you know, thinking uh, and learning how they think about the game and how they approach the game from a mental standpoint. And with football on our mind, let's go ahead and dive into how our local team, the Huntsville Rockets, did last night. Oh, I was there too. Mo Carter was actually up in the press box, though, all night long doing some play-by-play -play announcing. He has more from the X-Zone. Well, ladies, Huntsville Rockets were two wins away from completing an undefeated season, but first they had to take down the Chattanooga Eagles last night at Milton Frank. Now, the Rockets beat the Eagles earlier this year, so the Eagles were out for revenge. In the second quarter, it was scoreless when the Eagles quarterback slips a few tackles, gets out the pocket, and launches a prayer down the field, and he finds his man on a 54-yard touchdown. Extra point was no good. Eagles go up 6 to nothing. After that, though, the Rockets went on a tear. It all started with their quarterback, A.J. Clark. Clark will be seen here basically running out of his own end zone, finds enough time and hauls a prayer down the field to DJ Fife. Nobody touches Fife, so guess what? He's going to get up and get some more of those receiving yards after the catch. He'll be tackled inside the 20-yard line. That's for an 80-yard gain. Now, a few plays later, Clark is looking downfield. He's looking for an open receiver. Can't find a guy. Can't find anybody just yet. Slips not one but two tackles, and eventually he'll find Chris Ungata at the goal line, and he crosses it for a touchdown. And after that, the Rockets will go on a tear. They go on the win by a final score of 34-14, to 14, remaining undefeated on the season. 
Now the Rockets will play their biggest game of the season when they host the Middle Tennessee Bulldogs next week with the winner claiming the division title and a first round bye in the playoffs. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. at Milton Frank Stadium. Stay tuned for more WZDX Sports Extra. We've got the best of the week and you don't want to miss it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today, NASCAR took to the track at the Sonoma Raceway. Only a few laps after winning the race's first stage, AJ Allmendinger, one of the series' best road racers, left the race with a blown engine. His car stalled on the track, and he admitted missing a shift and causing the issue. But nevertheless, the winner of today's race, Martin Truex Jr., he smoked the field after a very beneficial pit strategy. It was his third race win of the season. And guys, it is that time of the week. It's time for best of the week. I'm feeling a little generous today, so Mo, no, I'm kidding. Kayla, I'm gonna let you go. Hey, hey, yes, okay. Well, we're gonna take it to the Travelers Championship, and Rory McElroy is teeing up his opening shot. But hold on, what was that? It's a squirrel. The little guy decided to steal the show and make McElroy wait just a little bit longer to take his shot, or maybe he was just trying to get a better look on such a great golf swing. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Now for my best of the week, before the Marlins Rockies game, a young kid named Evan Barbabo ran to the pitcher's mound to deliver the baseball before the game. He tried and tried and tried again a total of seven times to roll the ball up onto oh, the no. mound. <laughs> the ball kept rolling off. Finally, we kind of sped up the video a little bit, but finally on the eighth try, the ball stayed on the mound and young Evan ran it off. Now, that's a good example of if you first don't succeed, try and try again. And try, 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 try again. I love it. Absolutely. My favorite movie of all time came to life this week in Fresno, California. See, the Fresno Grizzlies baseball team had coming to America night. They rebranded as the Zamunda Lions. The coach was King Juffy Jafor. The team had Zamunda-inspired jerseys. Jackson Heights own Randy Watson sang the national anthem. Then the concession stands were serving McDowell's and the legendary Big Mick. They also were serving the sexual chocolate latte. Gotta love coming to America night at the Fresno Grizzlies place. The only thing that would have been much better would have been seeing Eddie Murphy in Prince Hakeem attire out there throwing out the first pitch. That would have been awesome. I have a question though. What's a sexual chocolate latte? <laughs> I have no idea, but apparently you just slide that one in there, but <laughs> right. <laughs> apparently it was approved to sell to people of all ages. Interesting. Uh, I mean, mm. interesting. Name, <laughs> but okay. I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> all right, everyone. That'll wrap up another episode of WZDX Sports Extra. I also want to thank our sponsors, Lazy Boy, for hooking us up with these wonderful couches as well. For Charity Chambers and Kayla Carlisle, I'm Mo Carter. Have a great week. We'll see you next weekend. Thanks for watching WZDX Sports Extra. Furniture provided by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably.